Lock chest, Nathaniel. What now? If you please. Thank you. Have a... Oh, cannot unlock the door. Never mind. I'm sure there's some quest that'll let you go in, th in there for some reason. And as always, just keeping an eye out for anything that we might be able to look at. This uh, will let you get to the map without having to go all the way to the other end of the city. That's a strange place to store a pitchfork. Uh, oh, he's looking over here. And true, sticking it into the trunk of a tree is not the first thing I would do to store a pitchfork. Namaya. Oi, about time you showed up. Namaya, you're still here. I keep my promises. Here, turns out you were right. The cache is here in Amaranthine. It is? You... you found it? I did. What you do with that information is up to you. I for one am done dealing with mages. Uh... I guess I should thank you. <laughs> Damned right you should. You get caught, Anders? I'm not helping you again. That's all I'm saying. I, uh... Suppose that requires some explanation. Friend of yours, I take it? She's normally more welcoming than that. A lot more. Nemea is a friend. Last time I escaped from the tower, I asked her to look into some things. That's why I was in Amaranthine. The Templars thought I'd come to take a ship, but it was to meet her. To find a cache. During the Blight, the Templars moved their store of phylacteries to Amaranthine for safety. My phylactery is among them, Nemea learned. So long as the Templars have that sample of my blood, they can find me. I need to destroy it. Hmm. Do you think they might have my old phylactery? They might. I only know mine is there for certain. Hmm. Interesting. But you are a Grey Warden now. What's to stop the Chantry from deciding mages and the Grey Wardens are apostates too? I want to be sure they can't ever find me again. Ever. Hmm. Fair enough. You're right, Anders. They shouldn't be allowed to control you, me, or any mage. I know we're busy killing Darkspawn and all, but the sooner we find this vial, the better I'll feel. What is that smell? <laughs> all right. So, uh, Vexus, I don't think, can hardly turn up this quest, considering that uh, when he became a full mage, his phylactery was sent off. But there's always a chance that the Templars here might have a copy, uh, might have the phylactery for themselves don't want to have Templars trying to track us while we're trying to do other important things. Alright, she's standing conspicuously there, but we can't talk to her, so... The whole well. quiet and stoic thing must get you a lot of action, huh? I take it you're an admirer, Ogren. What? No! No. Well, not unless... No! Good. Then I needn't worry about getting too drunk at camp. <laughs> okay, I like you, just not in that way. <laughs> More stairs. Marketplace handbills. So, uh, you think there's an apothecary around here somewhere? Probably. Why? Well... Yeah, I don't want to bother you with this. You being my boss and all. Spit it out, Ogren. Right. Look, for the past few days, I've had this burning rash. The skin's actually got a sort of greenish look to it. What did you touch this time? I didn't touch anything. 
You know, I bet it's that Grey Warden stuff we had to drink. No one told you to drink all of it. Uh, too late for regrets. Yeah, I'll just see if I can't find some nice minty balm somewhere in this town. <laughs> yeah, I guess we argued with Ogryn a little too much. But uh, a lot of his problems he does bring on himself. Hmm, another locked chest? I'll take care of it. And let's see, I know that the building up there is the local tavern. But I think I'll just finish out this circuit here before we move on. And I think we just have, actually. I don't see anything else particularly of interest here now. So let's have a look into the tavern, shall we? Then we can go to the uh, upper levels of the city. This one is called the Crown and Lion. I hear Hubert's gang got their hands on some moonshine. You think they'll sell some to me? Hubert hates you. That's a no, then. <laughs> the uh, random gossips, I, got a I guess. I've on my foot from working the fields. Want to see? It's bleeding and there's pus and everything. Ugh. No! Let's get started. Please donate generously with the please being misspelled. Because it's an orphan, uh, it's for the cause of helping orphans, get it? Let's see, so we see, scrawled on a stained smudged piece of paper. We are the blight orphans of Amaranthine. Poor children whose mothers and fathers have been killed by dark spawn. We are very cold in the winter and need 50 silvers for clouds and food. Please help. Alrighty. As you wish. So we, we donated to the Blight up. Orphans. Hopefully that's legitimate. If it's not, I'm going to go find who's making that scam. Okay, we got oil in a crate here in the kitchens. That's not surprising in the slightest. And we get a gift out of it, which is a single malt whiskey. And uh, three guesses as to uh, who that might be meant for as a gift. Who would you think would win in a fight? Andraste or the Archdemon? The Archdemon. But Andraste could call on the Maker. That would be cheating. Are you calling Andraste a dirty cheater? <laughs> she cheated on her husband, didn't she? Oh. <laughs> Ouch. Something I can do for you, friend. Did a Grey Warden named Kristoff come through here? And who were you supposed to be that is asking? I would be his commander, actually. An elf? I... Yes, of course. Haven't seen that fellow Christoph for almost a week now. Not sure where he went. His room's paid up to the end of the month. I guess he expected he'd be here a while. Did you ever speak to Christoph? Not much. He chatted up Sorsha a bit when she brought him his dinner. Maybe talk to her. I'd like the key to Christoph's room. Of course. Here you go. It's the last room at the end of the hall. If he comes back and gets upset, however, it's on your head. <laughs> well, it, it's, it had been a long while since someone saw that we were an elf and assumed that we couldn't... We were probably just a servant or something, so, uh, yay. <laughs> I was, I was getting... I was beginning to miss the, uh, elven racism, and yet it's back. Okay, here's Sorcha 
who Kristoff was apparently flirting with. Looking to wet your whistle, stranger. I understand you spoke to Kristoff. We chatted a bit. He was a friendly sort for a Grey Warden. Spent most of his nights here drinking. Wasn't ever loud or too forward. Haven't seen him for maybe a week now. You sound extremely like Queen Honora. Do you happen to have the same voice actress? <laughs> anyway. Did he ever talk about what he was doing? Said he was tracking some Darkspawn. One particular group that's been raiding outside the city. He told me they were acting strange, those Darkspawn. Acting obvious. Like they wanted to be caught or something. I expect he caught them. Probably why he hasn't been back, right? Um, right. Where did he go? Do you know? No. He took a lot of notes while he drank. Always writing things down. Maybe there's something in his room. And just how friendly were you two? We chatted, like I said. He's married, as I recall. Ah. Okay. Thank yous for the answers. My pleasure. Send him my best when you see him. And uh, speaking of Kristoff, um, for those of you who uh, m uh, made it to the end of my Let's Play of the of Dragon Age Origins, I put a link there actually to a um, Machinima series, uh, also on YouTube, um, that was done about uh, using the same graphics engine that. Uh, this game uses in order to tell the story of Kristoff uh, leading up to the point where uh, we're going to run into him. And uh, I don't think, I can't remember if they actually ever finished it. Um, but uh, it was really, it was a really good presentation. I enjoyed it. And it was basically starring Kristoff the Grey Warden. So here we got a book, Codex about the Tavern. Of course, just like in the previous, in the main game, you want to make sure that you pick up everything, just because it'll give you uh, experience, which is always nice, nice to have. Nathaniel finds some fire arrows. This is Kristoff's room that we just got the key for, so we'll go there last. Do this, do that. Yeah, you heard me. This should be easy enough. Potions for, or recipes for potions and poisons there. Uh, let's see. Can't open that door. Here, just lock chests everywhere. It's like people want to keep their stuff to themselves. Okay, that's it. Let's check out Kristoff's room. Ooh, map of Ferelden. This map of the Arling shows several locations, each of them being marked. Each crossed out. Oh, sorry. Each crossed out, except for a place called the Black Marsh. Oh, well, that's telling. See what else is in here. Christoph's mementos, which is a gift. Oh, go soak your head. Oh, come on, Nate. Cheer up. A letter from Aurora to Christoph. I wonder if that's his wife. New codex. Let's check it out. A letter from Aura, dearest Kristoff. My sister and her babe are well. I shall leave Jader as soon as they're settled. Expect me at Vigil's Keep within the month. Ferelden is cold and wet, so make sure your socks are dry before you put them on. I know how it is with men. You can slay a thousand darkspawn. When it comes to clean clothes and dry socks, you're hopeless. Can't wait to see you. Love, Aura. Hmm. 
So she was on her way to meet him here, it seems. Must be really tough being married if you're a Grey Warden. If nothing else, at least for that uh, whole limited lifespan thing. Okay, let's head back out. Now, it may not uh, seem oh, like it. Mage, huh? What's it like? To have all this power at my fingertips. <laughs> no, to always have to wear a skirt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you don't know the story behind the robes. You know how strict things are in the circle, right? Well, of course you do. Well, the robes make quick trysts in the corner easy. No laces or buttons. You're just, well, you're done before the Templars catch on. Really? Just ask anyone. <laughs> Anders and Ogryn like winding each other up. But anyway, what I was going to say is that, uh, believe it or not, we actually now have received all of the uh, major quests um, that are going to be taking place in the game. There is the Wending Wood, where we need to find out why the caravans are being ambushed. There's the Black March, where uh, we need to find out what happened to Kristoff. And there's the Chasm in the Earth, where the Darkspawn seem to be coming up from. Uh, and so as we go to each of those areas, uh, more of the main story will unfold, and we will also get uh, a companion in each of these areas. So this is the last part of the lower floors to look up and uh, to look around in, and this of course is the local chantry. There's some guards and Win. What do you know? Oh, it is so good to see you, my friend. I contemplated visiting you at Vigil's Keep, but things got busy. What happened? The College of the Magi is convening in Cumberland, and I must attend. Hopefully, all this will blow over before it's begun. But you have enough on your mind as it is. I shan't trouble you with this further. Magi business concerns me too, Wynne. Very well. Then perhaps you should know that something stirs within the fraternities. The Libertarians wish to pull away entirely from the Chantry. And if they get enough support... Pull away entirely? That's madness. I hate Chantry oversight as much as the next mage. But they can't just decide to leave. This is a recipe for disaster. I think it's about time the mages freed themselves. The mages will never be free. The Chantry would never allow it. Our only hope for survival is to show them we can be trusted. Don't you remember what happened to the Circle in Ferelden? Do you want to give the Templars another excuse to call for the culling of all mages? This change cannot be forced. Well, perhaps you're right. Although I don't like it. Now, I have a great many preparations to make before I leave for Navarra. But perhaps there is something you can do for me. One of my colleagues, Ines, has spent the last few months in the Wending Wood. The Circle has been unable to reach her, given the trouble in the area. If you happen to find yourself in the wood, on your travels, perhaps you could tell her about the meeting of the College. What's she doing in the Wending Wood? Oh, who knows, rooting around in the dirt for some obscure plant or other, most likely. She has a keen interest in gardening. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant botany. Hobbies and eccentricities aside, Ines is a well-respected mage and a voice of reason. Something we could use on our side. The hour is late and I must go. It was wonderful to see you again. Take care, my friend. So we get a side quest from uh, Wynn, and uh, I thought that was interesting that uh, at the epilogue to the main game, she seemed the person who was most convinced that we would never meet again, 
I thought that was kind of funny, considering I, I had already played this expansion before, and I knew that we m ran into her uh, at this point. <laughs> but anyway, um, notice, uh, I, w I would like to point out that uh, on the issue of the mage is being free of the Chantry, of course, Vexus is all for it, because, you know, he hates Chantry control, um, and uh, uh, work to have uh, King Alistair actually free the local circle from direct Chantry control uh, previously. But Anders is, right now, he's a moderate. He understands, he, he doesn't like the fact that the... Uh, Templars are controlling the circles, but he also believes that uh, an outright uh, rebellion by the mages would just end up in, as a disaster. Um, so that's it's very interesting to look at his views here compared to what happens later on in the Dragon Age story. So here is another statue that we can regard. It figures, actually. What does? There used to be another statue here. It was a Byron Howe, my great uncle. He died in the rebellion, helping King Merrick reclaim his throne. Yet his statue is gone. All because of what my father did. Well, that's not very fair. I'll get them to replace it. Don't bother. Nobody here will want to see it. There's a long line of heroes in my family. The Howes have been around since Callan had. Now it's all gone. Curse my father and his idiot ambition. He lost everything for us, didn't he? It's up to you to turn that around now, Nathaniel. Not too much pressure, right? I wonder what happened to the old statue. Likely propping up the side of a chantry or something. Poor Al Byron. Yeah, statues of a pigeons. I don't want to look at it. Yeah, I think they're a little they're overdoing it a little bit on the we hate the house now. Got a potted plant. <laughs> really just taking random stuff now. Although it is a gift, so that should be useful. Here is the classic Chanter's board. So these are the great good deeds that need doing. Um, and I'll, I'll probably take a look at this uh, probably sometime off camera. And if I see something that I think might be interesting to try out, we'll do that. But in the meantime, I want to check out the Chantry of Our Lady Redeemer. Archdemon died. In Amaranthine, it's worse than before. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to figure out why. Um, the Darkspawn problem should not be getting worse. It should be going away. So something is definitely up. Found a gift in the Lost and Found. We are in true uh, adventuring hero fashion. We are now raiding the poor box of churches. <laughs> You just, you just gotta go with the kleptomania if, uh, if you're going to be an adventure hero. What? Do you want Open me to fetch the chest. Your glass of water? One of these days, Nathaniel, you're gonna like me enough that you're not constantly complaining every time I have you open a chest. Let's see, Sir Rylian. Make his blessings to you, sir. Oh, and to you. It's nice to meet a Templar who's actually friendly. Haven't had one of those since Colin. Sins of man brought the blight to us. And now, the sins of you. We must follow the example of Andraste and reflect upon the chant of light. Your friends and neighbors would do well to heed this lesson and join us in prayer. Mmm, someone's preaching fire and brimstone here. We have Alma. 
It's not like Karam to be gone this long. I was sure I would find him at the inn. You met a woman distraught over her husband's disappearance. She mentioned that he likes to drink at the end, although she could not find him there. Hmm. I have to keep an eye out for a wayward husband. I also like the, uh, the added touch they have here that uh, this chantry is laid out exactly like uh, the chantry in... Um, Lothering that we visited. Uh, so similar to uh, how uh, medieval churches and cathedrals were often laid out uh, the exact same way. I thought, thought that was a nice little design touch. Of course it could also just be because they're they are lazy and they don't want to make new models, but anyway I appreciated it. Here's the local Reverend Mother. People are far too lax in tending to their spiritual affairs. Oh, of course. And then we picked up a blank journal, and I believe that's a gift as well. So we're just really stockpiling the gifts here. Um, which we will uh, dole out back at the keep. I think that's all for the Chantry, so now let's go up to the upper levels of the city. So let's just use this door. And since it's all part of the same uh, map area, you don't have to wait for any loading screens. I'll just take you right up. Um, you will note that the upper levels are not all fully connected to each other, so you have to do a little bit of up and down work if you want to look at all of it. So that's one corner. Yeah, we came out of that corner, so we'll head back down really quick here. Oh, nope, the door's locked. Never mind. Gotta go back this way. That's a bit annoying. Okay, so let's just circle back in the opposite direction that we started. So, you're a how? Do you have a point, mage? Hey, I'm fond of the hows. I'm also fond of the whys, the whos, and the whats. <laughs> how <the children. laughs> Oh, it's shameful how long it took me to come up with that. <laughs> Such a bad joke. Reminds me of something I'd probably come up with. Hey, right, let's try this side. So, up we are, once again. Uh, since this is the forward part of the battlements, we can now go up to just above the main gate. So, that's where we are now. So, here we look back, back over the place where we uh, came in. This takes us down to the gate, yeah. This is the gate, so you have to cross around here and go back up. And as you might imagine, there's occasional stuff uh, with side quests and the like where you have sometimes have to meet people up here in the top uh, battlements. I think there's just one more area that we need to look through. Oh, actually, no. I think we did cover it. Let me check the map. Uh, we got that. We got that. And we got that. Yeah, okay. I think we did cover everything. So now... We will listen to a cow. But after that... Um, I think we should decide on where to go next. We've certainly got a lot of quests on, on hand that we can address. 
So here is the Knotwood Hills. So this is where we can go if we're going to uh, check out where the dark spawn are emerging from. This is the Wending Wood. This is the uh, place where caravans are being ambushed. And this is the Black Marsh where apparently Kristoff went off to investigate something. Um, so like I mentioned before, these are the three primary uh, story areas that we're going to be going through. Um, but I think the first thing I'm going to do is head back to the keep, uh, get a little bit of uh, uh, housekeeping in order, and also give away some of the gifts that I can uh, at this point to our companions. You don't always wear robes, do you? Not when I'm naked, I don't. <laughs> I mean when you run from the circle. Robes would make you easy to spot. So does the big I'm a mage sign around my neck. <laughs> I like to make it easy for the Templars. Ah, so that's how it's going to be. Yeah, Anders is always pretty sarcastic about a lot of things. Okay, let's head up to the main throne room. Okay, looks like we have some uh, things to settle here. So let's have a look. I'm here to serve, Commander. Can you do anything to resupply our soldiers? I will do what can be done, but you would be wise to keep alert for trading possibilities in your journeys. If you can persuade any merchants to trade here, it would benefit the vigil considerably. Very well. That will be all. Very well, Commander. So that is uh, one more part of updating the keep, is to find some uh, merchants who would be willing to set up shop here. Let's see what Seneschal Verrill has to say. Commander, the Lords of Amaranthine have come to swear fealty to you and the Grey Wardens. These were our Rendon House vassals. Now they will be yours. What do I need to know about them? Some of these lords bore Rendon no love, but others had their prospects ruined with his demise. Tread carefully, Commander. Lords and ladies, I present the Warden Commander of Ferelden and Arl of Amaranthine. Commander. Our differences are many, but our cause is one here. Ban Esmeral of Amaranthine, as is old custom, you have the honor of beginning. I promise that I, Ban Esmerel, will be faithful to the Arl in matters of life, limb, and earthly honor. Never will I bear arms against him or his heirs. So I say, in the sight of the Maker. I promise that I, Lord Edelbrecht... And so the ceremony is complete. Long live the Warden Commander! So, now we actually uh, are holding court here, so to speak. And uh, if you played through the main game as the Dwarven Noble origin, then this kind of situation will be very familiar to you. Because um, there were some scenes where you had to also play politics um, at the beginning of that story. Uh, but here, I think uh, Vexus probably feels a little bit on shaky ground here. Um, he's never actually ruled anyone before. And uh, some of the nobles sounded like they were just going through the paces and they're expecting that someone else is going to be in this chair at any moment. And others actually seem kind of excited that we're on the throne. So... 
A mixed bag, it seems. Here we have Sir Tamra. Warden Commander, we've all heard so much about you. So many good things, unbelievable things. But many of your deeds cost people here a chance at great advancement. So many fortunes were deeply intertwined with the old Isle. Some nobles here, they seek to end your dominion over them. This much I've gathered already. Perhaps you do not know the full extent of their determination. I've had occasion to intercept some of their missives. They are cryptic things. Any individual message is unintelligible, but together they form a pattern. They mean to end you before you can begin. A deadly coalition. A conspiracy to murder me? I'm flattered. I would take this matter seriously, Warden. They know of your capabilities, and they're spending a fortune to see their aims fulfilled. Given a few days, I can retrieve the messages. I would have brought them tonight, but I didn't know if warning you would be wise. I've much to lose and precious little to gain. Farewell. We will meet again soon. Oh, great. So there's actually a conspiracy brewing to assassinate us. Again, if we were part of the dwar Dwarven Noble origin, we probably would just take that in stride. <laughs> okay. So, right now, it's just the Seneschal again has something for us. Let me know if you want the nobles cleared out. Uh, if you want the ceremony to end, I mean. What do I need to know here? There's really only two who can offer real support in the war. Lord Edelbrick, master of the Firavel Plains, controls more farmland than anyone else. He's powerful and popular. Van Esmeral rules the city, wealthiest in the room by far. She may not be loved, but she cannot be ignored. I've recently heard that there's a conspiracy against me. Do you know the conspirators? The right of high justice is yours, and treachery is a capital offense. Sir Tamra doesn't know, but she's bringing me some evidence. She's a sly one, Sir Tamra, but knowledgeable about such things. Better to be a touch paranoid than turning up face down in a ditch. To proceed, we'd need strong proof, and that'll be hard to gather. There are options, some I would not recommend. They could turn the nobles fierce. Tell me about these options. We could have some soldiers try to spy on the nobility. I suppose that might bear fruit. There are also rumors of someone called the Dark Wolf, who finds information for a fee. Dangerous fellow, by all accounts. How do I reach this Dark Wolf? No idea, honestly. Somewhere in the foreign quarter of Amaranthine is all I know. I'll see if I can find him then. You need to head to the city, then, and chase down a ghost. Interesting. So the uh, two nobles he mentioned, of course, are the two ones who are actually shown uh, pledging their loyalty here. Honored to meet you, Warden Commander. You come to us during desperate times. Not more about your precious farms, Edelbrecht. Some in our Arling do not have the comfort of city walls. On the plains, the situation is dire. What seems to be the problem? As we feast, the peasants on our lands are starving, or worse. The city's defenses are more important, Edelbrecht. There may be wheat in the silos now, but if the farmers die, where will you get your food? I doubt your pleas are entirely altruistic. Edelbrecht can't defend his own lands, so he asks the commander to save him. I admit my lands are ravaged and fortunes diminished, but it's my grain that fills Amaranthine's belly. Then I will take the matter under advisement. Thank you, my liege. Alright, so Lord Edelbrecht wants soldiers to be sent to defend the farmlands. What about Ban Esmerella? I see that Lord Edelbrecht wastes no time in canvassing you for soldiers to defend his farms. Do not be deceived, Commander. His livelihood is all he cares about. 
Amaranthine is the jewel of the Arling, and she must be protected. So why should I protect the city over the country folk here? Pragmatism. A farming hovel can be rebuilt with straw and mud. Amaranthine was built over generations. If she falls, then this great Arling will be diminished. Wealth is well and good, but what measure do you put to human life? The folk in the country outnumber your city dwellers many times over. I would not be so vulgar as to violate the decorum of this event. Commander? Interesting. Okay. So, I was initially under the impression that most people were in the city. But, it seems that that may not actually be the case. Let's see. Anyone else? We've got Sir Timothy. A couple other nobles here. Although, I'm not sure if all of them have dialogue screens. Nope. Uh... He does, Lord Guy. It's an honor to have you as our liege, Commander. Eh, but he doesn't have much to say. Do, 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 do. You can see that the cask and the portrait of one of Howe's ancestors is active. That means that they have something to say to us now. Let's see. Let me know if you want the nobles cleared out. Uh, if you want the ceremony to end, I mean. Eldebrex said we're not defending his, the farmlands. Eldebrex speaks truly, sir, but things are dire. He and Ban Esmeral both contest the deployment of soldiers. But we don't have enough men. It's a matter of what you want to protect. The city, the land, trade. Hmm... Yeah, something to think about here. Hmm. Well, as far as our duty to the Grey Wardens, our primary concern is defeating the Darkspawn more than anything else. Trade must flow. We need supplies to fight the Darkspawn. As you wish. So in the end, you have to choose which of the three you want to send soldiers to. Either to defend the roads, to defend the farms, or to defend the city. Um, and so we chose the roads. And like many other decisions in uh, the Dragon Age series, there really is no definite right or wrong answer here. It's just uh, either what you as the player think is most important or what you think the character you're playing would think is most important. Let me know if you want the nobles cleared out. Uh, if you want the ceremony to end, I mean. I think the ceremony has gone on long enough, Seneschal. As you wish, Commander. Clear the hall. The Commander has business to attend to. Oh, so now we can actually have some quiet time with the companions here. Alright. So I think I'm going to end this video here. And uh, when we come back, I'm going to start giving out some gifts to the companions and seeing what kind of stuff they want to talk about. But also, there's another matter I'd like to to uh, deal with here. That's because uh, even though there aren't as many decisions in this game that affect the story as in the main game, uh, I'd still like to carry on the tradition of getting some input every now and then from you guys in the audience. So here's the question that I'd like you guys to give me some feedback on. And that is, where should we go first? Um, because uh, I'd like to tackle one of the main areas before we start doing some side quests. So where should we go? Should we go to the Wending Wood? 
Should we go to the Black Marsh? Or should we go to see the Darkspawn Chasm? Um, it It's not a huge deal as to which one we do first, but uh, I'd just like to see what you guys are interested in seeing. So please make a comment in the uh, below this video, and uh, after about a week or so of gathering some feedback, I will be able to make a decision. So I hope to hear from you guys. Until then, fellow adventurers, take care.